All right, I got some time right now. Let's check the Reddit if there's any new card reveals for the new expansion. Let's see. Several new cards revealed, including Zwei. Interesting. Of course, it's tragedy. Oh yeah, that's a tragedy with Zudia. Behind the card, I always watch those. The future of unlimited vengeance blood we might see. Hmm, what is this? Two, three. Seductress Vampire. Eight costs four for Bloodcraft. During your turn, when this card is added to your hand from your deck, if Vengeance is not active for you, reveal it and then banish it. Vengeance is active for you for the rest of this match, even if your leader's defense is more than 10. Fanfare, deal 4 damage to an enemy, then restore 4 damage to your leader. Excuse me, what the fuck? Okay, okay. Hey guys, what's up? This is Cool here. So, we finally got that reveals for the Rebirth of Glory, and um, there are scary cards coming out for this expansion. I am terrified, but at the same time, I'm just like, I'm, I, I guess I'm pretty excited, because tons of new cards, tons of new combos that I kind of like thought about as well. But first thing first, right guys? Seductress Vampire. Okay, the first thing I thought about this card when I saw it on Reddit, I was just like, seriously, what the hell? Why? They killed the class. They killed the Vengeance class, pretty much. And, um, I, I, I don't know about this card. I mean, you can't really mulligan for this card. You can't have it in your hand. You have to pretty much draw it. So that's kind of like the drawback of this card, I guess, right? But... The first thing I thought was... I was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? <laughs> so, Vengeance is active for you for the rest of this match, once you reveal this card to your opponent. That's such an easy condition, man. I mean, like, there's so many card draws for Bloodcraft that that's not going to be a problem. And putting in three of this in your deck is, is going to be a for sure, for sure. Oh my god. Like, what do you guys think about this card, man? I, I'm terrified. At the same time, just like, what happened to Vengeance? What happened to taking that damage and, you know, bringing back that bringing back that Vengeance to the opponent? Like, the revenge, right? Like, I took hits, so I'm in Vengeance. You know, like, that's the class. That was, like, I feel like the theme of it. And they killed the theme of it with this card. And from now on, an unlimited everyone is gonna be using this card for sure to go in vengeance like 100 percent. there's no other card that you want to use to go in vengeance why not just use this card right so seductress vampire guys i'm i'm a little bit scared for this card in the like i'm i'm excited for the expansion to, pl to play this out but in the long run i think it's just gonna destroy unlimited in my opinion any kind of vengeance card that's going to be coming out now it's going to it's going to be like mediocre or like i don't know it's just going to be moderate it won't be op anymore because of this card they restrained this class with this we were all wondering how they're gonna like uh rescue vengeance class but i i did not think of this i did not expect them to just give him fully vengeance permanently for the rest of the match just just revealing this card to your opponent wow okay so that was just one card i i'm just really really wow like surprised and uh anywho this card kind of killed vengeance and it also like saved vengeance for for now right but we also got this card too so we got the azazel corrupted darkness it's four cost three three and it's a Bloodcraft uh, card, obviously. It's a fanfare, deal 2 damage to an enemy faller. If Vengeance is active for you, deal 6 damage instead. So, all in all, I mean, it's still going to be a pretty good card to put it in to your, like, Vengeance, uh, like Vengeance deck with the, with the Vampire. But the Evolve effect for this is, uh, Evolve, change your leader's maximum defense to 10. 
give your leader the following effect can't take more than three damage at a time this effect is not stackable and lasts for the rest of the match so that is way better for a vengeance effect like if you want to play as like a vengeance like you know going to like a risky mode and such right like that's the reason why you're going to vengeance i feel like like you're taking the risk it's a high risk high reward deck that's why there are so many OP cards and such for Vengeance. No, maybe not a lot of OP cards, but they should be printing more OP cards for Vengeance, I see. Well, okay, okay, there was that Abyss. Let's, let's forget that Abyss for a second. <laughs> but any other Vengeance card were, were okay. Like, the Air Jammer was really strong, I guess, but, like, it's, it was dealable, right? But this is going to kill a lot of, um, I guess, OTK-verse. So that's going to be really good. And I think this expansion is getting rid of a lot of the OTK-verse, which is really nice. Because it started off from, like I guess, like that Chimera back in the day. Uh, what was that? Like Maybe like Wonderland Dream. Uh, was it Wonderland Dreams or Starport? What was it? I forgot. Yeah, so change your leader's maximum defense to 10. Give your leader the following. Okay, so I think this is going to be a pretty strong card. Anywho. Okay, so the next card I thought was really interesting is the neutral card. It's a polo. Two cost one, two. Invocation at the end of your turn if you have two play points and no cards in play. And your opponent has at least one card in play. Put this card from your deck into play. And Fanfare enhance nine. Game plus seven plus seven. And ward. So... I think this is going to be like a guaranteed like one card in any kind of deck like you could just put one of him in and then you'll have a turn two at least if you have if you have no turn uh two drops so it's just like a vanilla two I mean it's not even a vanilla stat because two cost is usually two two but this is a two one two but at least you'll get a minion on the board if you don't have anything so you won't brick as much so i think this card is kind of interesting like it's we're gonna be seeing this card a lot i think yeah yeah this invocation is really nice this is a fair invocation for sure <laughs> all right so the next card that we got i thought this card was really interesting it's a two cost two two bronze card for shadowcraft but it's a greater lesser mummy we used to have a mummy back in the day it was two cost two two and Necromancy 4 and used to get Storm, but now it has uh, no stats on uninvolved, I guess, no effects, but when you evolve it, if another allied follower is in play, perform Necromancy 8, give Storm to another allied follower. Okay, so I went through the uh, the list in Shadowcraft, and I'm just like, oh, what can I use this on, right? And there it is, guys, we finally got it. This is a huge, huge support to this male of obliteration at x of this followers attack this this valley equals the number of allied followers destroyed during this match so i remember we used to do a lot of like um tier stack and such right and this was used in those tier stack but this is going to be good with that greater lesser money it's going to get it it's going to get storm right so i mean it's the same thing as pretty much Misha. In Portocraft, <laughs> right? But Shadowcraft also has a Misha now for Necromancy 8, I guess. Interesting, right? Okay, so the next card we have is the Pot of Greed. Draw two cards. Sorry, wrong card, wrong card. This card, the Harvest Season. It's a three cost for Forest Craft. Draw two cards. If at least two other cards were played this turn, draw three cards instead. Yep, pot agreed. Okay, so the next one we got here is you guys remember this card? Ah oh, shit! Here we go again. We're gonna be going to the next card. Okay, I thought this card was really interesting as well. Imina, Ad uh, I don't know how to say Idolin or Adolin. I think it's Idolin of Madness. It's a four cost one three. It's a really really interesting card. At the same time, very confusing as well. But we got the Imina Idolon of Madness. 4 cost 1 3. Fanfare, transform an enemy follower into an idol of madness if there isn't an enemy idol of madness in play. And Clash, give the enemy follower minus 4 minus 0 until the end of your opponent's turn if there is an enemy idol of madness in play. Oh my god, this is so hard to, uh, this is so hard to say. 
So what? So it's a 4 cost 1 3 fanfare transform an enemy faller into an idol of madness if there isn't an idol, I, enemy idol of madness in play. So what is the enemy uh, idol of madness? So it's a 4 cost countdown to last wards transform a random enemy follower excluding Imina into an idol of madness if there isn't an enemy idol of madness in play. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, wait. Transform a random enemy follower into an idol of madness if there isn't an enemy idol of madness in play. Wow. So, whenever this amulet is in play, it transforms a random enemy follower into an idol of madness. And then, when he has it, it transforms my, uh, my followers into an idol of madness. And then I get the amulet. And when I get the amulet, it transforms my enemy followers. Wow. Wow. This is insane. Wow, what an interesting card. I, I, I like this card. Wow. Holy shit, I see a loop. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. This is very in interesting. It may not... Eidolon of Madness. I think I'm going to be crafting this card for sure. Wow. Okay. So the next one we have... Yeah, Portalcraft did get a bit shafted in this expansion, I think. Okay, so we got the Artifact Duplicator. 7 cost 5-5. Five, five. Fanfare. Randomly summon a copy of different Artifact followers destroyed during this match until your area is full. Whoa. Randomly summon a copy of different artifact followers destroyed during this match until your area is full. So summon a copy of different artifact followers destroyed during this match. So does that mean that we get random followers? Like, they're all going to be different? Or are they going to be just one of the same copy? Like, I remember reading the Japanese version of this and it kind of like had a different translation, I feel like. So... This card, we just have to see it in play, I think. It's still a mystery. <laughs> There's a lot of like really interesting cards. Okay, you know what? I give it a second thought. This expansion is really interesting. I like it. I like it. And they're still supporting the Makinas. I like how they're uh, supporting traits still. I think that's a really, really big factor. That's going to be a huge thing in about Shadowers for sure. Okay. So, the Artifact Duplicator, that's a really interesting card, I think. If we put in, I guess, Prime Artifacts and such, right? That would be nice. Yeah, Prime Artifact Decks, eh? We'll see. It's too bad we're not going to be get getting that cannon um, anymore. I think that's going to be rotating out. But we got the next card here. Okay, so I thought this card was really interesting. It's called the Strategic Assembly. And it's a neutral card, it's an amulet, two cost. It's so a countdown 3, at the end of your turn, give a random allied follower plus 1 plus 0. At the end of your turn, give a random allied follower with no effects ward. We finally have a card. That's kind of like, um, test of strength. But, at the end of your turn, give a random allied follower with no effects ward. Right? That's kind of interesting, isn't it? With no effects ward? This is a really strong card. I mean... You could give a vanilla stat a ward, pretty much, with no effects. Yeah, it's this card. So it's a one cost amulet for Dragoncraft, and it's a countdown 20. Fanfare enhance 8, subtract 10 from this amulet's countdown, and summon 2 health flame dragons. So I think that was a 4 3 rush. And whenever an, an allied follower comes into play, subtract 1 from this amulet's countdown. Last word, summon a dragon sphere. And what is the dragon sphere, right? So the Dragon Sphere, Dragon Sphere, Dragon Craft. Okay, it's a 10 cost. At the end of your turn, transform all allied followers without ward into Infernal Dragons. And if you guys aren't aware of what Infernal Dragons are, they're just a vanilla stat, 8 cost, 8, 8. So at the end of your turn, trans transform all allied followers without ward into Dragon. 8, 8 Dragons, wow. So you'll get, obviously you'll have to put this, uh, this card on the board so you'll have four board spaces right 
Yeah, four eight eight. Yeah. What the hell, right? <laughs> okay, so we got this card as well. I, and this is definitely going to be a meme, I think. And I'm going to be trying it out. But I don't know if it's going to be consistent, but it's definitely really interesting. We finally have an Inferno Dragon deck. An 8 cost 8-8. Eight, eight. I remember trying to make an Inferno Dragon deck like a while back, like two years ago. Because it was just an 8 cost 8-8 eight, eight vanilla stats and it was just really strong, but no it had nothing. <laughs> it had nothing, so it had really no, not much effect, I guess, right? But those are the Rebirth of Glory cards that I'm really interested in. But that Seductive Temptress Guides, Bloodcraft. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's just do the treasure trove. Let's get that 1 million rupees here. Ooh, okay. Okay. 100 rupees. But guys, there thank you Psy Games for giving me so many tickets, man. I have so many tickets now. And I'm so excited to open all these. 3 of the Legend Packs, 20 of the upcoming card pack tickets, 31 Steel Rebellion, 16, 15, 19, 20. Altogether, that's probably like 100 or so. I'm so glad I'm playing this game. So glad I'm still supporting this game as well. But thank you so much for watching, guys. And hopefully, you know, I want to know what you guys think about the reveals of the Rebirth of Glory. Like, is there any kind of combos that you guys thought about already? Let me know on the co comments below. And I want you guys to have a great, great time. Peace out.